Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the 90210 show. My name is Mark. With me, as always, is my attitude-filled wife, Carol. How you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up, asshole? <laughs> it's been a good week here. It's March 4th. 1999 uh how you feeling tired i'm groovy baby how are, are you, you? You're groovy cool yeah i'm good All i'm right. good i took a nap i feel good yeah yeah maybe you should take more of a nap uh what is your problem sir my problem carol is that we watched dealer's choice an episode of 90210 we did and it made me feel gross inside <laughs> yeah yeah that was it was for weird, many different weird ways. episode what's the dealer's choice do you think that's referring to the cop's choice do you think it's referring to noah's choice do you think it's referring to brandon's choice do you I, think it's referring to sophie's choice i sophie's choice they should I, they, that should have been the name of the episode sophie's choice I think um, it's just because they went to Vegas, so they picked a dealer's choice as a Vegas-themed thing, and then wow. everybody, as you point out, are dealing with choices. So That's true. Yeah. I don't think it's uh, specific to one of the characters. The Sophie's choice would have been best, though, because of how offensive it would have been. Wow. Where do you want to start? Oh, my God, I'm tired. Are you okay over there? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Um, I don't know. Let's uh, start with Donna. All right, let's start with Donna. So, Donna Martian. <laughs> the episode starts out with uh, Donna's assistant coming to pick up the revisions for her designs. We Have we met this person before? No. Okay. They act like we should know her, but no. Donna knows her. Yeah. Donna knows her. Donna gives her the stuff. Donna's like, oh my gosh, yes, uh, I have deadlines and stuff. Like, she's, mm-hmm. you know, completely lost, whatever. I don't like how they make her act so ditzy sometimes. Yeah. And as you pointed out, she gets screwed over all the time because they, they make her character kind of a doormat, too. Mm-hmm. Well, they even point that out in this episode. Because, um, yeah, this this girl is running her stuff over to the, I don't know, store? Clothes maker? Who the hell is I, this? Yeah, I don't know who. Like, it, that was very confusing. He talks vaguely about being made, like, VP of west coast stores like or something and i don't forget my friends Mm -hmm. uh or something like that so i don't know i think like it's supposed to be the the chain maybe like a chain of fashion stores or clothing stores or something i don't yeah i don't know we don't know enough about fashion for the shit to make sense so later this assistant bitch gets hired, quote unquote, in house when she screws yeah. Donna over. So, I mean, it has to be where, at least I guess, where they're designing the clothes for the company. I don't even know what's going on. Like, yeah. so I don't do stores. Do stores? <laughs> this is a serious question. Do, do stores create their own fashion lines? Or, because I know there are designers and they're, they're like, so there's like Donna Karen. And there's like a Ralph Lauren, right. Giorgio Armani, and all that stuff. And they create lines of clothes, and then they sell those to stores, which sell them. And I guess they they buy them or whatever. The stores buy those clothes, so that's how the clothes makers make money. And they sell them for more, and that's how the, the, the store makes money. But are there also... Stores, because there's a lot more in stores. Like, you go to Kmart or something like that. There's a lot more in stores than Giorgio Armani and Donna Karen and shit like that. Yeah, they don't even have designer names on them. So so. are there stores that also make their own Mm. clotheslines? And is that what they're doing? Or are those clotheslines just smaller and much lesser known? And they don't, you know, they have names like at a bugle boy or whatever you know <laughs> i feel like that's what's happening that um they'd be making clothes for a store under the store's name instead of so because it's yeah. not like this girl could be like i'm selling donna martin designs because she's not donna martin right but they're supposed to be partners because that's yeah. what she lies and says you know it would have made i there were so many things that i thought 
originally was this script supposed to be different? Like, <laughs> were these storylines supposed to be different and then things got changed a little bit? Because it would make more sense if things were mixed up just a little bit. Was this assistant supposed to be Sophie, the, the redheaded bitch that... Uh, because mm. that's something that you could see her doing yeah. is... You know, trying to get famous by riding the coattails of somebody else and like, sure, you know, but and she was part of the fashion thing and the last thing she was going to wear Kelly's dress or whatever. Oh, yeah. So it's like it would make more sense if that this was supposed to be her, but it's not her. Yeah. And so it's just some other character that's probably never going to be on the show again. But yeah, like earlier, the um that guy whoever the VP dude yeah. says, Oh, you have such a cool operation here with, uh, that one girl being yeah. like, the, you got good cop, bad cop. She's yeah. like the bad cop. You come in all oh, shucks routine. And mm-hmm. Donna looks so confused. And she's like, what are you talking about? And she's like, yeah, your partner, you know, she, she gave the presentation. She knocked us out of the park. She's like, I don't have a partner. Like, why did that not raise any flags to him? He just continues on, like... I love when they write conversations in this show where one person is talking and the other one is just not listening at all. Yeah. Like, it's so unrealistic. <laughs> it's just like, I don't have a partner. And he's like, well, I'll tell you what, you know, this fucking word, we're sending this over to Chicago to the main office or whatever. And she's like, so a lot's riding on this. And he's <laughs> like, yep, everything. Yeah, so she decide, decides to just go with the lies because he likes this girl. Which is so dumb. She yeah. should have just been like, um, no, I did the sketches. These are my designs. I did the sketches. She mocked up. You know, she helped, like, flesh out the sketches a little bit. She did a little bit of extra stuff with them and everything. But, like, these are my things. But she shouldn't have been presenting them. She lied to you. Yeah. This is the presentation. But instead, she just blindsides him. Yeah. So, yeah, he gets he ends up hiring this girl and Donna just like loses the whole opportunity. Because it's it's cheaper, I guess, to hire in-house. And she Donna goes up and and talks to her and the girl's like, "Call security." And she's <laughs> like, "Hey, I just want to know why you fucked me over or whatever." And she's like, "Yeah, you know, I saw an opportunity. He told me to present like, you know, it seems like she didn't mean to lie at the beginning, but like she just got caught up in all these like, well, present it to me." And she just got caught mm-hmm. up in all this stuff and everything. And she saw an opportunity and she was like, "Oh, I'll take it and stuff." And Donna's like, "You know, when they realize you can't design clothes, <laughs> that you're just a uh, someone that draws, like you're not going to, they're going to fire you, right? Yeah, she's like, you said I was, and then she's like, you said I was more talented than you, and Donna's like, I lied, and storms away. <laughs> this is not a well thought out plan by this woman. No. So, that's exactly what happens, and she shows up at Donna's door later, all like, crying, like, oh, you're right, I got fired, can I have another chance? I'm and, so sorry. And like, she, what the fuck? Donna points out something that's a personal grievance of mine, where she's like, I don't know why people think they can just act however they want, as long as they feel bad about it later and say sorry. Yeah. It's like, exactly, Donna, you're right. So, she slams the door in her face, but then she makes- She was talking about Shannon Doherty, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> But then uh, she makes what I think is an epic mistake, and she listens to a voicemail message from this guy wanting to hire her. He's like, hey, can we revisit your designs or whatever? And she just deletes it. Like, she's like, fuck you. Like, why are you mad at him? Yeah, and how is it his fault? He thought that, I mean, I guess what he did was kind of sleazy, even from his, like, wrong point of view. Mm -hmm. He thought that these two were partners. And then the other one was like, hey, I'll leave my partnership and come work for you for less money or whatever. And he was then then you were going to pay Donna and he's the the firm or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah, cool. Of course. Come on. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. I guess maybe that's that's how this kind of makes sense. Now that I think about it, I guess that's how stores can have their own brands. They hire or they purchase designs from young up and coming designers. Sure. And then, okay, that, I guess that makes sense. I, honestly, I'm not artistic in, in this realm at all, really. And I'm not saying I could design clothes and stuff like that. But how hard is it to design clothes? Mark, that's awful. I mean, like, how hard is it to design, like, a shirt or pants? Like, I'm sure it's very hard. You have to have 
a art skill where you can draw and sketch it out. Absolutely. You have to visualize it in your mind. You also have to know how to make it. You have to know how the different fabrics go together. You have to understand how different colors work together. But I mean, like how, like shirts and pants, they're like, they're they're the same dresses. They're all like... What are you talking? You're such a man. They're all the same, right? That is like, such a stupid man thing to say. No offense, men out there, but come on. Like... Most of our audience is women, so it's fine. <laughs> like, all dresses are not the same. All shirts are not the same. They're not? No. And I mean, s- pants, I guess, are, are mostly similar, but still, they're different. I think all my uh, my <clears throat> uh, shirts and stuff, you look in my closet, they're all pretty much the same. Well, that's because you just buy a something. t-shirt in a different color or different, like, thing on the front, and Design, that's yeah. it. Yeah. How hard is it to write, like, gerbo across the front? <laughs> No, uh, I'll tell you what, though, uh, female designers, how about pockets for women? Why don't women have pockets? Um, because we have purses. Okay, but, like, what's the, the, what's the bad part of having pockets and pants if you're a woman? They can make you look, they can make bulges, they can make you look fat. Oh. <laughs> Your face! <laughs> like, that's, like, that's the worst thing in the world. <laughs> But if it's just you like, might as well just carve a scarlet F on <laughs> every fucking pair of pants that's, that says pockets. But I mean, like, look at yourself when you put a wallet in your pants. If they're kind of tight, like you can see the outline of the wallet. No woman wants it. We try to avoid panty lines. Okay, we we don't even want panties showing up. <laughs> you think we want our lipstick in there? Come on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so Donna's unemployed. Again, yeah, she just keeps getting screwed over and over and over. Mm-hmm. By by Noah, he's been over three nights in a row. <laughs> and uh, speaking of he's Noah, fucking the pain away, right? Yeah, she's kind of. I don't of, think he's doing anything no, for her so. right now. <laughs> she's kind of part of this story too. Yeah, he, um, you know, he's dealing with having lost his father to suicide. Yeah, and he goes to the police station to pick up his things, which I thought was kind of weird, but. Yeah, well, I don't know why he's the one that's, like, I, I would figure the mom would be picking up the things. But. Yeah. Well, do, doesn't the mom live in another state? Isn't, wasn't the dad, like, visiting him or? I no? don't think so. Oh, I no, think... you're right, because he was at his office when he killed himself. Yeah, I think they, I think they live in, yeah. in the same state. I think they live in California. I guess you're I guess right, that's though. why he came back to California. And apparently bought that boat from Donna's parents, I guess, because I really am pissed off because he's selling the boat. That's another thing that's happening is he's. He's selling the boat, they say, uh, I think, to help his parents or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, when did he fucking buy this boat? Why? Like, it it doesn't instill confidence in me in your guys' writing ability when you don't remember what you wrote last season. Yeah. <laughs> when you first introduced this fucking character and Donna was like, my parents have a boat you can go stay on. And then, like, they had a party on that boat. Mm-hmm. Remember, and somebody stole one of yeah. Donna's mom's things or whatever. Yeah, that was her. That was her fucking boat. How did it become his boat? <laughs> did he yeah. get squatters' rights to the boat? He was just on there <laughs> long enough. Yeah, I do not remember him purchasing this boat or being given this boat. But anyway, see, I don't have enough confidence in my own memory, though. I feel like it totally well, happened. Here is the thing: is like I, I have confidence in my memory, but in this particular instance, not a hundred percent. There might have been a throwaway line at some point where he cut a check to Donna's mom because there was a there was a point in which she was like he's a fucking bum or whatever, and then they found out you know before we all knew he was rich and then mm-hmm. they found out he was rich and then she liked him or whatever. He might have bought the book. Bo- oh fuck, fuck! <laughs> now now that I'm talking about it, I do think there was a point where he wrote a check for the boat and she was like, "What is this? Some kind of joke?" And he was like, no, fucking cash the check. My last name's Hunter or Hunter Oil or whatever. Oh, yeah, like, they were, like, auctioning it off or something. Oh, yeah, that's right. There was an auction for it. He did buy it. Fuck. <laughs> All right, forget it, writers. I take it back. He yeah. bought the boat, and now he's selling it. That's okay. They fucked up a lot of shit, so you're all right. I mean, seriously. I feel bad, but, yeah, okay, there was an episode where he bought the boat. <laughs> we got there, everyone. <laughs> so, anyway... <laughs> Um, he is not doing well at all, and what, one of the items that he has to pick up from the police station, which is totally fucked up, is the gun that his father shot himself with. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> he's like, he is, this is the best acting he does in the show, he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, 
do I want this? this? Why do I want this gun? He blew his brains out with this. And he's like, yeah, sorry for your loss or whatever. Yeah, sorry for your loss, sir. Like, no sympathy in his voice at all. No, this this desk sergeant sounds like he's he hates his life. Yeah, he's he's done. He has nothing left for anybody. But uh, so, like, he's like, this this isn't a warehouse. We're not storing this stuff or whatever. But it's a gun. Don't you think that like if I was gonna if I want a gun destroyed. For whatever reason, I would take it to a police office. Right. I'd be like, hey, can you get rid of this? Yeah, it seems like the least they, they could do is be like, oh, you don't want it? Sure, we'll get rid of it for yeah, you. Yeah. I mean, not fuck you, take it. I mean, if I was that cop, why not just fucking take it, take it with you? I mean, does he even have just a license to have a gun? I mean, we know that he has that's, guns. That's true. But this cop doesn't know that. That's true. Here, take this firearm that's registered to a dead man. Yeah. That's just, a, that's just a, a, a license to commit a crime. Yeah, ridiculous. So then I honestly have no idea. Now that I think about it, we don't know anything about fashion. I don't know anything about uh, the handling of evidence <laughs> for police either. I What would happen with, with a gun in that situation? Because you can't, you'd have to transfer ownership in some way. Like, guns have to be registered to yeah. people's names. I feel like it would have just been confiscated, honestly. Yeah, like... I don't know. That seems weird. Yeah. Um, but instead, Noah has it. And because Brandon goes with him, by the way. Yeah. I forgot about this part. He He's leaving Donna's house in the morning. And he just walks past her, doesn't acknowledge her in any way. He's leaving with Brandon mm-hmm. to go get his dad's stuff. And she's like, wait, I want to go with you. I'll take you. And mm-hmm. he's like, it's already taken care of. Yeah. Which, you know, it's obvious he's going with Brandon. Right. So it's kind of weird and pushy for her to be like, but I want to take you. But at the same time, he was being kind of a jerk because he's not even saying good morning. Yeah. In the background of this whole of this whole thing with everything happening is Donna trying to like help him get close to him and stuff like that. And him like completely shutting her out. Yeah. But I mean, like he's completely shut down. He is off the rails, off the chain. Not OK. And people <laughs> yeah. keep trying. He's off the chain, everyone. <laughs> But people keep trying to act like he's sad fine. At, sad at night, happy, or sad in the morning, happy at night. He's just like, I'm, I'm off the rails. And then when uh, he gets into the club, I'm off the chain, everyone. Shut up. <laughs> off his rocker. Okay. <laughs> no, she, um, oh, no, now I lost it. I oh, lost sorry. my train of thought. Donna. Um, no, the fact that people keep talking to him like he's a normal person yeah. and can have a normal conversation. Well, yeah, at one point he's on the boat afterwards with the gun with Brandon and he's looking at the gun and he's like, oh, 357, what a weird decision to fucking shoot yourself with this. If I, I would do a shotgun, he's like, but and like Brandon's like talking just normally. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's another situation where it's like. Two different conversations. Exactly. He's having a completely different conversation and Noah's like, uh. Problem, problem is you can't, you know, you can't pull the trigger. Like, I, I heard Hemingway used his toe. <laughs> like, how do you not respond to that? How do you not stop and be like, man, you are right. Right. Like, but then he just keeps going on and talking about, like, Cheetos or whatever the fuck he's talking about. I don't yeah. know what Brandon was talking about. That's true, because Noah, Noah's uh, side of the conversation kind of overshadows everything. But yeah, like he's, he's, I'm like, this guy sounds like he's going to fucking kill himself. Yeah, he totally does. So... Yeah, later, then he's outside of the after dark. Noah, Noah pulls a paper out of his back pocket and it's like, here's, uh, here's a plan. <laughs> here's my plan with my will and a date. Oh, speaking of, they found his dad's suicide note. I think, like... Yeah, what- people keep just piling on. His mom's, like, he goes, he shows it to Donna later because he's all crying and everything. And he's like, my mom found this in his drawer or whatever. <laughs> his like, sock drawer. Just gave it to Noah. Like, hey, look at this, Noah. Like... That's a weird place to put a suicide note. And he's like, yeah, exactly. That is weird. Wouldn't you put your suicide note where your body is going to be found so people have it right away? I mean, not necessarily. Like, I think if I was going to kill myself, I would uh, I would design a scavenger hunt. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, people would have to pass a series of tests to read my last work. Answer these riddles three. Um... <laughs> no, I mean, I guess I kind of get it, like, if he had planned it that morning or whatever, or, I mean, like, earlier, but just, like, wrote it, put it in there, and it was like, yeah. Um, I don't want, you know, 
buy martini or blood to get all over those nuts. <laughs> Pristine in my I guess drawer. that makes sense. So yeah, but so, the notes all like I I regret my life and I should have fucking spent more time with my family, especially Noah, the main character on a TV show, <laughs> and not any of my other kids. But I think because he was affected more by this or whatever. Yeah. What about your son that uh, uh, goes around with a date rape truck? Right. Dress? Do you think maybe he was affected by, <laughs> by this? Yeah, I think you owe an apology to your whole family. He's sir. in jail right now. <laughs> That's true. Poor Noah and his mom. <laughs> like, they lost both the, mm-hmm. the both of them. So, yeah, so he is just just hit. He is not, not handling this. Yeah. And at one point, he's standing outside the After Dark, and he pulls a David and just fires this gun out into the air. Oh, yeah. And he looks at Don, Donna's out there and he's like, you ever wonder where the bullets land when you fire a gun in the air? And then like, all of yeah, sudden, and then all of yeah, a sudden do. just here. Ah! Right? <laughs> like, why would you do that? Yeah, it's weird. They, they, like, they, there's always a fucking newspaper article about after the 4th of July, people, especially in the South, fire their guns up in the air and shit like that. And it's like uh, seven people injured by right. falling bullets. <laughs> it's stupid. Don't do it next year, people, and they they always do it next year. But, you know, with all of this going on, Donna's like, I want Noah to live with me. She's talking to Kelly. Mm -hmm. Like, and and at one point, she actually says to him, you know, I want you to stay with me. And he's looking at her like, are you fucking crazy? Mm -hmm. Like, he's not ready to, like, make a relationship step right now. No. He says, if you want to help me, leave me alone. He's like, I'm going to go sleep on the couch I raped Valerie on. (laughs) That's where I'm staying. You know, I don't understand why... We keep acting like these people are actually homeless because, like, he owns a nightclub. Yeah. He should be able to rent an apartment or something. I'm sure he could if he wanted to. He doesn't have to go sleep in his office. And he doesn't have to go live with Donna. It's just easier, I guess. I guess. It's a weird choice. It is weird how they all kind of live together. I guess it makes it easier so that we only have, like, three sets that we have to go to. That's exactly why, yeah. But (laughs) because we have the beach house uh, where two of them live. Mm -hmm. We have... The Walsh house where three of them live. At 1.4-ish. And then we have, uh, what's his name? It's David's, David's house. Yeah. Which looks... The newest set. Yeah, and it, it's a really bad set. It looks opinion. like a set. Yeah, the outside of it does. A hundred percent. Like, I'm like, oh, I can see the lot. Right. <laughs> yeah, the outside is very much a facade, but whatever i guess their budget's getting cut you know the shittier the show gets yeah i don't like well i assume that um the uh the walsh house is like a real house Mm -hmm. that they just they bought the rights to use that as you know their establishing shot or whatever because a lot of times when they when they show the exterior it's a shot they've used thousands of times at this point but sometimes they have things going on in the yard of the walsh house Every, well, oh yeah, I get, I, but not as much anymore. No, but they do. So I, I don't know. I kind of feel like maybe they actually own the house. Maybe it is a real house and they own it. I don't know. It's interesting. You know, there's a story about uh, the house uh, that was the Freddy Krueger house. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was in Los Angeles. It's supposed to take place in Springwood, Ohio, but the house was in Los Angeles. and Of course. And, and I, I love it how everyone calls it the Freddy Krueger house, like I just did. It was Nancy's house. It wasn't ever Freddie's house. Yeah, true. But it's so associated with him or whatever. Anyway, they were going to tear it down and build a like a, a supermarket or convenience store or something like that in its place. And a guy that was like a big fan or just some random dude was like, you're going to tear this house down? Let me buy the house. So he bought the house and then paid a crew to excavate the house put it on a truck oh wow like like they can you know he bought a parcel of land like i don't know half a mile down the road and and had them drive it there and put it on that parcel of land. crazy and the, so he owns the freddy house now the house wouldn't have had a basement in california right so that would make sense um yeah typically they don't do basements that much in california the freddy Krueger house did have a basement but again it right. was supposed to be in the midwest so. well yeah I, I don't think the i think the interior were shot separately from the exterior. I don't think they used that house. I think so, they just used the exterior of that house. Because I'm just thinking, like, you'd have to either separate it from the foundation or also excavate the foundation and 
dig that out and plant it like a tree? I don't know. I don't think works. I don't think they would excavate the foundation. I think they would just detach it from the from the basement foundation and implant. I don't think he lives there or anything like that. He just owns the house. Weird. Because he didn't want it to be destroyed. And now it's like uh uh, like a tourist attraction or something like sure. that. Sure. I mean, I'd want to see it. But, um, but yeah, so he saved it from being demolished. Well, good for him. Yeah. Preserve history. Exactly. Even if it is Freddy Krueger. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, that's kind of the end of his storyline, sort of. Like, he cries and sobs in her arms. Oh, he does fucking freak out, though. In the background of this, they're having the, oh god, yeah, the Martins' twenty uh, fifth anniversary party. Yeah, her parents, and she he looks gets, so cute. By the way, I love her dress in this in he, this scene. I don't even remember what she was wearing. It's like a black like with um, oh, what do you like spaghetti straps? Okay, and little roses on it. It's really cute. Nice. Anyway, go ahead. But he uh, he gets completely drunk, as yeah. does Brandon. At this. Yeah, Brandon, well, he wasn't as drunk as Noah. No, but they, they're they both wallowing in it. Mm-hmm. We'll get to Brandon later. But yeah, and he decides to interrupt while they're doing speeches. Donna's up there with her parents, having given a toast. Her parents are about to do a toast, and he's just like, wait a minute. Well, they're in Noah's house. <laughs> yeah. He, I couldn't understand half of what he said because he did drunk too well. Yeah, he really did, though. It was very believable. <laughs> He's like, let me say, let me I'm a toast to the Martians. <laughs> and he's like, uh, let me tell you, so Don and I get married, we're gonna have 150 kids. <laughs> but yeah, I won't, so I'll see half of it because it'll be dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I want to know who he would say would be dead. Yeah, I don't. I think he. I think he was saying the Martins will be dead Which, by that like, point. How long are you going to wait to have these kids? <laughs> but maybe he was saying he'd be dead, <laughs> or maybe he was saying half the kids would be dead. I don't know. Or maybe he was saying his dad's dead, but he did say would be. Yeah. So yeah, it was weird. So weird I, toast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a weird toast when you mentioned having 150 kids in death. And then the next day, he's like, how bad was it? He asks, I think, Brandon. And Brandon's like, well, on a scale of one. No, no, to- no, David. David. David goes, oh, if, this isn't the, if it isn't the Toastmaster. Right. And he's like, oh, I don't even remember how bad was it. It's like on a scale of one to 50, 50 being the worst toast in the whole world. You were at 100. <laughs> And so then he sees Donna, and he asks if her parents were mad. She's like, oh, no, I just talked to my dad, and he understands. No, 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 no. What? No, no, no. What? We just watched this. What the fuck? He comes and says, I'm sorry. And she says, apology not accepted. And she goes, you know, you've ruined my fucking parents' anniversary. And he goes, your dad doesn't think so. And she's like, what? And he goes, I called him and apologized. Oh. And... And uh, he he and she forgave me or whatever, and she's like, "And did you believe him?" <laughs> okay, I and that's about when that. we were like, "Yeah, her her dad is like the nicest guy in the world." He is though. Like, who would just be like, "Oh, it's okay, no worries." He said he understood. That's what Noah said. He said he understood. Yeah, I mean, I get his dad just killed himself or whatever. It is emotional, but like, yeah, I mean, I guess that does kind of give him a free pass for sort of. I mean, lot. how much could he have done? What do you mean? Well, if he had raped uh, Mrs. Martin, <laughs> oh my the God, dad had been like, I understand. <laughs> well, no, I, obviously. So there's a limit. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so that wraps up their storyline. Noah and Donna are kind of not doing great, and he is turning into a fucking alcoholic if he doesn't scale it back, and he's going to go live in his office. And he has his dad's gun, which he may or may not use at some point to kill himself if he doesn't get yeah. some help here. Yeah, she was talking about her shitty time where she, because she admits what happened with the assistant and everything. Yeah. And I don't, I honestly don't remember like where we left off exactly. Like, I don't know if he's like, I'll come and live with you or whatever. Mm-mm. Okay. So they're just like, they're just not great right now. Yeah. Okay. okay so. Well, let's see next. I guess Brandon. That was the first storyline, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a four hour long episode. Oh, dear Lord. Is it? <laughs> I can see it happen. <laughs> no, it's fine. We're, we're going to take our time. We're going to give you yucks. And we're going to talk about all this because a lot happens in this episode. Yeah, we can go to Brandon next. Uh, less happens with Brandon, I think. 
Yeah, uh, less happens with most of the storylines, I think. But uh, Grant, except Valerie's. Yeah, that's true. Noah wants Brandon to write the obituary for yeah, his father. Yeah, I forgot about that part. And he's like, "What? Why?" And he's like, "Because like." If, you know, if, if somebody else does it, first of all, the family does it, usually. Yeah. I, I, I like, this is weird. I've, m- both my parents are, you know, like, not here anymore. And both times, the family members, some family member or group of family members contribute to writing the obituary, and then you just submit it to the paper. Yeah. You, there isn't someone that's like, I'll write all the obituaries. I guess maybe because he's a more well-known member of society. Maybe that's why, yeah. Like, I assume when, you know, some, like, like president of a big company, like Ford Motor Company or something dies, or, like, a president dies or whatever, they do obituaries. Like, a writer will write the obituary. I don't know. But anyway, so he wants him to do it because he's like, if, if uh, oh, I forgot the Noah voice. If, if somebody else does it, they're just going <laughs> to... She's rolling her eyes at everyone. They're just going to say uh, they're just a fucking tight in the business and you got to be, I want to be honest. Okay, Tony. <laughs> Angela. <laughs> Mona. Samantha. Jonathan. <sighs> Noah. Yeah. Is not Italian, okay? <laughs> just no. want to get that out But there. he's got a weird, he has a weird voice. Like, yeah, he has a Muppet. He's what do you Muppet think? Voice. A Muppet voice? <laughs> Well, hey there, Donna. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm sad. Oh, dear Lord. That's what he sounds like. Sure. Anyway, so... <laughs> he looks like a Muppet. He doesn't sound like a Muppet. So Brandon is interviewing the family to yeah. get information to write this obituary. And she's like, yeah, Ray Wise. He wanted to be an actor, but... That's the, the actor's name is Ray Wise. Oh, okay. oh, by the way, last week I accidentally said that he was that he was the body of Quato from uh, from. I didn't accidentally say it. I said it on purpose, <laughs> right? But I we rewatched uh, or I rewatched. She watched for the first time. Uh, fucking what's the hell's it called? Total Recall, and it's not Ray Wise. Sorry, Ray Wise was in RoboCop. That's what I was thinking of. You know what? Both Paul Verhoeven movies. Nobody fact checked that. Nobody thought, "Hey, what the hell, man?" I'll bet you somebody did. Well, then they should have written, and they didn't. Lay so you missed your chance. Lay fee nineteen ninety four dot com if you want to yell at us. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, he was in a rubber cop. So yeah, the mom says that he, the dad, not Ray Wise, uh, wanted to be an artist. Yeah, and that he tried. And he had an art show in New York, and the critics like tore him apart. So yeah. then he just went into the family business and like it was slowly real... had his soul sucked out of his body through the rest of his life. Yeah, kind of sucks. Yeah, <laughs> paints him in a different character. I guess I don't really have sympathy for him. Still, like he was not a very well, sympathetic character. Sympathy for the devil. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He just he'd he be sucked. a good devil. Yeah, he would. I agree. The actor. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, so he's dead. And... Yes, he is. <laughs> Very astute. And Brandon is doing the interview and everything. He finds all this stuff out, and he's ta- talking to Noah about it. And Noah's like, that doesn't sound like him. He's not, he was a fucking asshole or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, he's coming... Noah, Noah's coming to grips with who his dad was throughout this whole thing. Brandon is coming to grips with the fact that he hates his life. <laughs> Because he's like, he's like, I want this on page three. And they're like, no, the fucking bra uh, company wants their ad on page three. And it, like the layout works. The, the Janet, I think is her name, the one that does the yeah. layouts. She's yeah. like, she's like, no, it works like this or whatever. We'll put it on page six. And he's like, no, I don't want it on page six. This is a... A, 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 a friend's family a member. A pillar of the community that's died. This has got to be a big story on page three. Why not put it on the front page? And he's like... No, Brandon, that's not what people want. People read our, our stuff for movie news and for music news. Like our show. For stuff that they that they listen to, to Massive Late Fee for. <laughs> and Brandon's like, yeah, that's fucking stupid shit or whatever. And he's like, don't you understand? This guy had an opportunity. He wasted his life. 
he could have done everything. He's like, instead of just being average, instead of just being a loser. And he's talking about himself. Mm-hmm. And they're just both staring at him like they have no idea what the fuck he's talking <laughs> about. <laughs> because it makes them seem really pathetic, those two characters. Because yeah. they're like, no, this is the best we can do. <laughs> so then, yeah, at the anniversary party later, he runs into a guy from the New, New York, York Observer Chronicle, some paper that doesn't exist. Yeah, probably supposed to be like the New York Times. Herald, maybe, I think. I think it was the Chronicle. But, okay. Um, he runs into some dude while he's all drunk and stuff. I think the Chronicle was the paper in... Uh, Citizen Kane, which is interesting. If mm. That's what they went with. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, the guy, like the paper guy. I know they were talking, and as soon as they start talking, you're like, oh, he's going to leave. He's on his way out. And I don't remember their conversation because then I started thinking about what you were saying. So, sorry, you're up. <laughs> well, they weren't really talking much uh, substantially about anything. He comes up and he's like, oh, yeah. Uh, I hear you're a writer, and he's like, yeah, if you want to call this fucking shit writing. And, because he's drunk, and he's like, uh, yeah, the Beverly Beat, and he's like, oh, that Brandon Walsh, I know you, I read your stuff. He's like, oh, yeah, fucking uh, uh, woman, uh, uh, or, or the fireman rescues her cat, and she comes out, not in her house coat, but totally fucking nude, because she wants to gangbang him or whatever. Whoa. He's like... <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's real fucking journalism, isn't it, fucker? And then he walks away. Yeah, that's exactly how that primetime television show went down there. And so then um, later, he's bitching again to Ian Ziering and Janet. And uh, Ian Ziering's like... Steve. Steve's like... No, the actor, Ian Ziering. (laughs) Steve says, you know what? Uh, you you sit here and you're like, oh, whatever. Like, I'm not a writer because I write for your shitty magazine. He's like, why don't you see if you're right for this job or whatever? And he picks up the phone. He's like, call him. So he calls him, and then they have a lunch meeting. And he's like, yeah, uh, man, uh, something about Kosovo. And, like, I wish I could do what you do and everything and stuff you've written on. And he's like, and then he says something that doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. But he goes... You know, you're weird. He's like, this is how you try to impress or whatever. He's like, first, you lay all your cards on the table. Second conversation, you're bluffing. He's like, that's a really shitty way to play a poker hand or whatever. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What's he bluffing about? Yeah, I don't I don't know. That was weird. But the the, the thing about impressing Brandon was like, you're trying to impress me because they're eating at a, yeah. like a f- fancy country club. Yeah, he's like, um, I, I play tennis with this guy that's got a membership here and he lets me eat here anytime I want to impress somebody. He's so like, like he doesn't even have a me? membership. He's like, look, if you hadn't called me, I would have called you mm-hmm. because I've been following your career for years, Brandon. Like, why does everybody act like Brandon is such a fucking wonderful golden boy? And if that's the case, then why is he working at some shitty newspaper in the first place? For his friend. Whatever. Um, but he says that there's an opportunity at the New York or at the, the LA branch of this New York paper. Yeah. I don't understand that. <laughs> And this is supposed to be like USA Today. I don't get this. I don't know. And um, he's like, no, I can't actually offer you a job, but I can put in a recommendation. Yeah, and they, the people in, in New York want to meet you. So yeah. you got to go to New York. So I don't think he's like leaving the show, though, because it's the L.A. section. I don't understand how he leaves the Beverly Beat and stays on the show, though. Well, why? Like, Kelly doesn't have a job at all. Like, why does he have to keep working at the newspaper with Steve to be on the show? Well, who's going to work at the newspaper with Steve then? Like, who's going to be the writer? He's like, going to start screwing Janet. That's, <laughs> they don't need anything else going on. <laughs> there. There's just there's not going to be a paper. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It's just going to be every every uh, copy is just going to be Steve and like nail Janet again. You know, I think Steve pretty much opened that paper so Brandon could write though. Yeah, well, also because he needed something to do. Yeah, but that's not his passion. It's Brandon's passion. I think that was more well, about... His passion is to sit around and do nothing. Yeah. He's like that guy from Office Space. Right? But anyway, so... Uh, oh, you know what else Ray Wise was in was The Getaway. Mm. We did that. We did that movie. We did? He was the dad. I don't remember that movie. Remember it was Charlie Sheen and Christy Swanson in a car? Oh my god! It was the first year we started the doing... chase. Yeah, the chase. What did I say? The giveaway. 
Oh, the getaway is what I said. Oh no, the chase. Yeah, yeah the I remember cha- the chase. The chase. They're both. Uh, they're both. Can't forget the chase. They're both Ali McGraw and Steve McQueen movies or whatever. Okay. And they were both remade. Um, but yeah, the chase. Uh, he's the dad, Dalton Voss. Okay. Anyway, so what was I saying? Where were we? At? I, I what don't were know. We talking about. We were wrapping up Brandon's storyline. So and then we got into Steve's like life purpose or whatever, and oh yeah, so. then we trailed off into. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what <laughs> happens. I mean, that is the end of Brandon's thing. Yeah. He's going to New York to interview, and we'll see if he gets the job at this paper. I so, hope he does. Yeah. Um. I don't think David really has. M- oh yeah, he does. With the girl, David and Steve, and the stupid girl again, Sophie. Sophie. I, I paid attention to her name this time, so I could know her name. Her name's Sophie, the worst character on the show. She lives with Steve, and she's taken over his bedroom, and he's uh-huh. been sleeping on the couch. And all of a sudden now, she's like, you can sleep in the bed with me. We'll Platonically, just- the line down the middle. But she says it in a flirty way. Yeah. Well, and she's also, and, and on the sly, she's meeting David. Right. Why is she, like, laying it on with Steve at the same time? I don't know. And here's the thing. We'll get into the minutia of the storyline, but I have a really big problem with this storyline as a whole. Okay. So Steve ends up seeing them together at a coffee shop. He knows that Sophie's lying to him. He knows that that, that David's lying to him mm-hmm. and all this stuff and everything. And when they have, when David and Sophie have conversations, he's, she's like, yeah, you're with Steve or whatever, like, you know, stuff like that. But she's not with Steve. No. This would make so much more sense if she was dating Steve. Yeah, why is she not fucking Steve at least? Yes. They should be, yeah, they should be having sex. Something should be happening. Or she should be pretending at least to be his girlfriend. Right. Like, they should have, it shouldn't just be Steve wants to date her. But she has made it clear several times, I'm not going to date you. This is platonic. We're just friends. She's flirty with him and shit like that, you know, So because he's she's using him to, right. to have a place to stay and everything. But she she's said many times, because he's asked mm-hmm. her on dates and stuff like that, and she said no. That this storyline would make so much more sense if she was pretending to date him. It would. It would. But it doesn't make any sense because it's like, uh, David, I thought I fucking trusted you or whatever. We were friends, you know, and shit like that. Well, and it's like, David's not doing anything wrong necessarily. I mean, he's lying, which is wrong. But, like, you can't just lay claim to a person. But he did. And he told David he didn't want him to date her. And David said he wouldn't. So that's the problem. But it is I stupid. Guess. Yeah, I agree. Like, they're grown men. They're not high schoolers. So, like, stop it. And... I don't know why she doesn't correct David when he's like, you're with Steve. Yeah, she's like, no, I'm not. I've told him. We're just friends. But she doesn't really, like, drive that home anymore because she is flirting with him and wanting to sleep in his bed and stuff, too. Yeah. And he said to her, you know, I'm done with this. And, you know, you need to stop leading him on. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you need to get yourself a place and blah, blah, blah. And and then instead she's going to continue. And she's she's checked off, become famous on her on her checklist because I guess she knows exactly what she wants to do, and it's it's ride uh, David's dick to fame, I guess, because he she thinks somehow that him getting this job at this radio station is going to help make her famous. I don't understand how, but anyway, like he's has an audition for this uh, this radio station to be a DJ again. Yeah. And, well, he was a DJ in, in college, not yeah. for a real station. But still, I mean, that's that's pretty mild fame. I hate how they bounce him from just thing to thing. Well, just, he always stays in the music realm, at least. Yeah, at least. But, so he's doing a thing from the After Dark. And she's helping him with his playlist and, and all this stuff and everything. He's like, oh my gosh, these, these, these ideas are so good. You're so good at those. And she's like, that's right. Like, we're going to be cool together or whatever. And so he's doing the thing, and he has, like, no confidence. He's like, no, I'm losing him. This sucks and everything. Because she calls him from a payphone because yeah. she's there with Steve yeah. to talk. And he, he's on his cell phone, and she's like, oh, you know, I can tell you're getting upset. Don't worry. And then he starts, like, talking to her. And she's like, 
your voice is so intimate and alluring. <laughs> and, and they they're, they're closing up on her lips, talking and everything. Yeah, that was like weird. She's a phone sex operator. What the fuck was this? I don't know. I mean, I guess yeah, it's supposed to be like look how she's like charming him with her words or sure, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it was weird and creepy. I didn't like it. And so like he gets the confidence and and finishes the set and everything's cool. So go be with him then. Like, mm-hmm. what is going on? He has a house. Go stay in his house. Right. It's so funny too because like they're like they. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, David's doing such a good job and stuff like that. And she's giving him this this sexy pep talk or whatever. And then, like, the next thing he does, he's like, you guys ready for this? And then plays a song. And it's like, wow, what talent. Mm-hmm. I think he's supposed to have, like, recorded that ahead of time, maybe. Recorded what? The song. No, no, these are, I, you, you think these are his songs? I don't know. I don't think so. I think he's playing songs. Well, then, yeah, what the fuck? If he's just like DJing the event, too? that's what he's doing. Yeah, he's just like like. What hey, are you freaking out about? I, who knows? That's what I'm saying. Like he doesn't say or do anything where I'm like, wow, what a talented DJ. Yeah, I mean, he sucked when he was doing his own music, but at least it was his. Right. Let me let me insult another uh, industry. Like I insulted <laughs> the fashion industry. How hard is it to be a DJ? I mean, you have to have a good voice. Yeah, that's that's basically it, right? You have to have a good voice. You have to be able to talk and not stumble over your words. And operate machinery. Yeah, they push a button. Yeah. Like, play this now. Put this CD in. Let's play the in- entirety of So Much for the Afterglow. What's that? It's an album by Everclear. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, like that. that's why I'm saying, like, it's easy. So, yeah, that whole thing's very annoying. And and the other thing is Steve's going to figure out she's not actually going to school. And why is she pretending to go to school? I don't understand. And why are they lying about it? Like, I do not get this. They're not together. She's a grown woman. Yeah. If she doesn't want to go to school, Steve's not her dad. And, yeah, she's, she's not, not with him. him. So, yeah, the whole thing's fucked up. So, and I would rather have his attention on something or somebody else. And this is where we drive it home. The next day after this stuff, uh, he comes over to David's, knocks on David's door. David answers. He's like, hey, what's up? And he's like, hey, um, how you doing? He's like, you want to come in? He's like, no, no, that's okay. Uh, Sophie left late last night. She didn't, she's not here, right? She didn't come over with you. He's like, nope. I haven't seen her. And he's like, okay, all right, thanks, David. You know, sorry if I've been so weird lately or whatever. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's cool, man. And then he leaves, and he goes back into the, into his bedroom, and Sophie's there because right. they fucked. And she's like, do you think he suspects something? He's like, I don't know, maybe. And that's where we leave that storyline. And it's like, why is he going to David's to check up on her? Yeah. They're not together. The whole time I was thinking, this is pathetic. Yeah. It is. It's weird, creepy stalker behavior. Because if if they were actually dating, and he was like, hey, it was weird she went out, like she got up from bed, the bed we sleep in together, and she went out last night, that would be something. I don't know why they didn't just write that they have even a casual relationship. Mm-hmm. Like you said, whether they're just fucking or whatever, just something casual. Yeah, that would make a lot more sense. That he cares more about than obviously she does. But they didn't do that. Yeah. And it's just, it's really stupid and weird. And I gotta say, too, like, you know, he cut his hair, so it's not like the little mini, like, fro thing that he had going on. I know, you think he's more attractive. He's more, I'm not attractive, trust me. I still don't think he's super attractive, but he's much better looking than he was. Uh So go get a different girl, Steve. Have some self-respect. Oh, yeah. And find a girl who will love you for you and your money. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Oh, okay. So, Kelly is devastated. Kelly? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just saying, uh, because I'm I'm, I'm using her as 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 an amuse bouche, as a... uh, as a, a, a lead in to Valerie's story. Okay. Because she's kind of part of Valerie's story. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Kelly is still sad over Brandon not being there. Uh, she, after he picks up Noah, she looks on her little rail and she's like, oh, you forgot your phone. And like, he's already gone. And she's like, mm, okay, well, I guess I'll just keep this phone and give it back to him. 
And she goes back. She goes to his house. And it's nighttime now, so that was the morning. So she's had this phone that she, you know, that Brandon's phone all day. Yeah. She goes to the house, and he's gone, but Valerie's there. And she's like, yeah, I came to return this to, to, to what's his name? Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And Valerie's like, you can't even remember his name. You were going to marry him. <laughs> um, she's like, well, he's not here right now. And she sees this pile of, of her stuff, and she's like, who threw all my shit in this box? And Valerie's like, uh, I don't know, probably Brandon. Like, Why does she care? They're broken up. Yeah. Is he supposed to just, like, did, he's supposed to build a shrine to her? Apparently. All these people are very unrealistic. Yeah. So she's all mad. It turns out, though, that Valerie and Valerie's mom and the, I don't know, the police officer guy. Detective, yeah. I can't remember his name. He's not a detective. He's a uh, beat cop. Oh, okay. Remember, he got passed over for promotion. Sure. He's, uh, they're getting married. They want to get married in Las Vegas. So So she says that to Kelly, and Kelly's like, I want to come with you. Well, because right before that happens, that phone rings, and she answers it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And it's someone named Susie. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell them we're on for tonight. Yeah. But she doesn't say who, by the way. Yeah. I thought that was weird. weird. She's like, hello. She's like, who's this? And, and uh, Kelly goes, who's this? She <laughs> goes, it's Susie. Tell them we're on for tonight. Yeah. So then Kelly's like, take me with you when they're going to Vegas. Yeah. Take me with you like a little puppy dog. You hate Valerie. What the fuck? Valerie even goes, this doesn't mean we're friends. And they're staying in the same hotel room. Yeah, what the fuck? I don't know. It makes no sense. Yeah, why don't they have their own separate hotel rooms? I don't know. They've got money. Exactly. But, yeah. So, before this, before this all happens, before they uh, they go to Las Vegas, uh, we open the storyline of Valerie with uh, the mom shouting expositional dialogue to us, where she's like, Oh my gosh, Valerie! Oh, dinner last night, and you made breakfast this morning. You even let mm. us borrow your car. And the guy's like, uh, "I'll tell you what, you know, you know fucking uh, make me feel really welcome here." <laughs> yeah. So Valerie's laying it on thick of being supportive. And David's like, "I thought you were going to tell your mom that you killed your dad." And she's like, "Nah, I can't hurt her." Yeah, I thought you were going to destroy your mom. He says, and he's like, and she's like, "Did you really think I was going to hurt my mom?" He's like, mm, "Yeah." <laughs> But I'm glad you didn't. Why is he there? Are they still together? I don't They're think not. they are. No. So why is he hanging around her house? I don't know. He's fucking fire crotch now. So mm. They're definitely not still together. Fire crotch. Yeah, Interesting. She, she's redheaded. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Valerie starts like subtly flirting with this guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could see it coming. She's like, well, she's, this is fucked up. She's getting ready for... To go out. They're all going out again or whatever. This is before the the Las Vegas thing. And he walks in. And he's like, oh, sorry, you know, whatever. She's like, no, I'm just getting dressed or whatever. She has all her clothes on. But she's like, can you zip me up? And he's like, mm, I don't know. Like, I'm going to be your dad. And she's like, yeah, well, you know, my dad, my dad used to zip me up. She goes, actually, my dad and I were very affectionate. Yeah, that was a fucked up thing to say. How can you say that? Like... That's not realistic. Mm-mm. It's not realistic that you have someone that was sexually molested by their father that later in their life says the line, my dad and I were actually very affectionate as like subterfuge. Right. You, a sociopath might do that. Yeah. And Valerie is not a sociopath. No, not at all. Like no. she's a manipulative, like evil person sometimes. And she's got a lot of mo- emotional uh, damage. But she's definitely not a sociopath. Um, but anyway, so fucking he does and she's just kind of, I don't know, like she's just like really flirty with him and at dinner she's really flirty with him. Then that, I mean like all that's like the, those few scenes that we get before they go to Vegas are all kind of like quick sort of like just establishing stuff scenes. But enough because we know Valerie. Mm -hmm. So we know where she's going. But when we get to Vegas, that's when she kind of turns shit on. They're all like gambling and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And Kelly keeps winning over and over again because she's using her pain of breaking up with like (laughs) to channel winning numbers. Yeah, I don't know. know. And like, yeah, uh, God, Kelly, um, Valerie's mom is losing and she's like, well, you know what they say? Lucky in love. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, did she say that in front of Kelly? I feel like that was a dig. Um, <laughs> she did. She did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lucky in love, unlucky at cards. That's yeah. the saying. 
So her mom's like, I'm so tired. I've got to go take a nap. And Hillary's like, oh, I'll take care of uh, your fiancé. I'll, I'll keep him in the yeah, I'll, I'll watch him. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, no, no, you know. And she's like, no, no, it's fine or whatever. Yeah. Like, I feel a little sorry for this guy because he knows what's happening and he, he's trying to avoid it. He is trying. And, and it is Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, they hang out. Mm-hmm. They're they're flirting and having fun. And she walks him to his room. She kisses him, mm-hmm. and he pushes her away. It's like no, no, no. And then the mom comes to the door, and she's like, "Oh, I thought I heard you guys here, or whatever." Yeah, and she's all happy to see them, and everybody acts like everything's fine. Mm-hmm. And then I don't remember what happens next. I think it's like. It might be like the next day. Yeah, I, th- I want to say it's like the next day or something. It's like it's later. So, um, she asked, "What did she help me?" Because all I remember is the end. <laughs> I don't remember That's how they all end I can up think there of too. But like they're they're hanging out and stuff like that. And she, her mom again, has gone to bed or whatever. And she's like, "They're he's about to go to his room," mm-hmm. and she's like, "You know." Uh, they don't put clocks in here, so because they, you know, they want people to not know what time it is. I think it's always a good time to gamble and stuff. You know, if you're not tired or whatever, do you think it's a good time to gamble? No, that's what she said to him when she kissed him the first time. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. So yeah, I don't know how, but she gets him in bed. We're just gonna say, it. yeah, like they they go to. Oh, you know what it is? Because they cut to it. That's why they're downstairs later. And they're talking and stuff like that. And she's, like, being really flirty with him and stuff. And because I remember you saying, like, this is where you say no, like, you know, no thank you or whatever. And you get up and walk away because uh-huh. they're sitting or whatever. So, but they just cut. They, it's a, like a hard cut to them in bed. Yeah. And, well, him, her in bed with and the he's sheets. getting dressed. And, like, where's my shoe? You know, and he's, like, he's trying to he's fucking. panicked, get, yeah. He's trying to get out of there as fast as possible. And she looks emotionally distraught. And, when, and she's like crying. Yeah, when he well, was she already crying before he left? Because that would be even worse for him. I think. I think that he. I think that she was. No, I don't think she was quite no. crying till he left. Yeah, but then she's like crying in the bed when he leaves, and it's like, I I get that there's some kind of weird emotional like connection in her brain between being molested, right, and sleeping with this guy who's going to marry her mother because he's like a father figure, I guess somehow already. But like. You chose to make this happen. Yeah. Like, what did you think was going to happen? And that's, why are you crying? That was, I was so confused. Yeah. That was my point was like, did you, what did you expect to happen? Did you expect him to be like, no, you're going to be my daughter? No. Like, do you expect him to refuse? Because you're not blood related. Not it's at all. It's not the same as molesting your daughter. No. It's, you know, it's horrible wrong and, and very. wrong and it's not something i would do in that not even for tiffany amber Thiessen, in <laughs> that in that situation but it's still like not at that level of molesting your own flesh and blood mm-hmm. it's cheating is what it, it that's what it comes down to yeah. it's maybe slightly more fucked up because you're fucking the daughter of the woman you're gonna marry but it's still just cheating, really. But I feel like this was coercion and entrapment. I mean, he tried to say no to her, yes. and she was, like, really persistent. Yes. So I, I, I don't think that he'd necessarily cheat on her mom under any other circumstances. Okay, but I don't, like, I don't know. I, I It's still his fault. Okay. I just, but I don't, I like I said, I don't get her, why she's so upset about this. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see what, what's happening with her next episode because I'm sure it'll become clear right. whatever was wrong. But she lets them get married. Yeah, yeah. Tell your mom at least, hey, he fucked me. See, I don't think she can. I mean, her mom's already dealing with the molestation and the death of her father, just like she didn't tell her mother that she killed her father. Then why did she do it? I don't know. I don't know. I kind of feel like maybe it's punishment because her mother knew knew what was happening. Like, she just found out that her mom knew when she didn't think she had. So I think maybe she did this to punish her mother. Maybe. And maybe that's why she was crying because, like, it was fucked up in her brain 
because of what happened, but it was also the, the motivation to hurt her mom. That still happened, I guess. Yeah, maybe that makes sense. I don't know. But it's like she's always just going to know, but she's not actually going to tell her. So it doesn't really hurt oh, her that much. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she, now she has a secret that she's keeping from her. Well, she yeah. already does, though, that she killed her dad. Yeah. So. I don't know. It's all weird and fucked up. Maybe they'll give us better motivation next, you know, next episode. I don't know. It makes me sad for her. I'm not even like mad at her. I'm just confused and sad. Yeah, she's a very like if this show was better written <laughs> with everything that they've thrown at her that she's been through and stuff like that. She's a really I know she's supposed to be the cartoonish villain a lot of times in this show, but she's a very tragic character. Mm hmm. Like, well, with all the shit she's been through. Yeah. Well, and then Kelly walks in. She sees the stepdad leaving Valerie's room, mm. and they're sharing this room. She walks in and sees Valerie naked under the covers. And she's like, I'm I'm getting on a plane or whatever. In the morning, yeah. Leaving. And she just walks back out. So Kelly has a very small storyline where she meets this dude. Yeah. That's like, oh, a fucking bet 12, because it took me 12 seconds to fall in love with you. And she's like, that sucks. And 36 comes in and he wins. And she's like, I thought you bet 12. He's like, oh, 12 numbers. I hitched my bets. Right. So they, they like keep hanging out. He's like, what if we, you know, met in LA? Would you still, you know, like me? And she's like, yeah, probably. Or I bet on it. Yeah. She says, we're in Vegas. So he'll use Vegas terms. So maybe, uh, maybe he'll come back. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know what his name was, but. She didn't get laid, though. She should have gotten laid, not Valerie. Yeah, she should have had sex with the guy that's going to marry. For- no. What if he had sex with both of them? That, that, that. <laughs> you broke my brain. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Michelle Phillips, sorry, but your guy's cheating on you. How fucked up that her husband slept with her daughter, which is like just awful on so many Twice. levels. And then, yeah, again, now this, the husband sleeps with her, his, his stepdaughter. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. Not good. That you would have. Now, I don't want this to sound insensitive <laughs> because I know this happens. I know, I know, like people go through fucked up shit. I'm not talking about real world situations. I'm maybe, maybe kind of, but not really. But like, if that happened to you, would you start to like be jealous and resentful of your daughter? Yeah. Like, why does every guy choose you over me? Of course. Yeah, it's fucked up, right? Yeah. Yeah, way to go, 90210. You, you took something fucked and made it worse. So again, that's the episode. Right. <laughs> uh, you can write us at latefee1994 at AWOL.com. <laughs> Don't send us any stories. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com. Mm-hmm. And share the tapes with your friends. All right, let's see you next time. Bye. Bye.